Well, we need to talk about the Greenhouse Foundation. That's probably uh, one of the biggest challenges. And um, if it's not handled properly, it can really um, be a problem for building the greenhouse. I guarantee you, if you spend some extra time on that foundation uh, and get that level and square and properly anchored to the ground, uh, your greenhouse structure is going to go up a lot easier. There's nothing worse than trying to build a, a greenhouse kit that's engineered precisely square and put it on a foundation that isn't level and square. Uh, when you come to put your glazing in, it doesn't fit. And then you have to go back and shim and pry. And, uh, so spend the time that's necessary to get that foundation level and square. The dimensions for your foundation um, are probably different uh, on a kit greenhouse than what's advertised. Typically, the greenhouse dimensions are given as 8 by 12, 10 by 12, 10 by 16. But the greenhouse foundation is usually has to be more than that. So you probably need a couple inches extra. And this is because the glazing materials, the glass, the polycarbonate, is usually 24 inches width and the framework has to be a little bit more than that, 24 and a half inches, to allow spacing for the screws to go in between the glazing panels. So if you add a half inch for every two feet, you end up with a, a greenhouse that's maybe 12, 4, 12, 5 on the length. So be sure to check, double check the foundation dimension of your greenhouse. It's going to be different than the advertised, what we call nominal foundation dimension. When you get your foundation uh, laid down or you're laying your forms, the critical measurement is also going to be a diagonal measure from corner to corner. When those measurements are identical, then you have a square foundation. So just measuring diagonally from corner to corner assures that you have a square foundation. Your foundation needs to be uh, solid down to the frost line. So whatever your frost line is, you're going to want your foundation uh, dug into the ground down to that, found, down to that frost line depth. Uh, this maybe is not as important for uh, a greenhouse made out of uh, polycarbonate uh, because a polycarbonate greenhouse can, can shift and it's not going to affect it. But if you have a glass house uh, particularly insulated glass, you don't want that foundation shifting at all uh, in disturbing the glass, uh, breaking the seals or breaking the glass. So it's very important to find out what your frost line is and make sure your foundation goes down to the frost line. I mentioned on, uh, on page, uh, page three about insulating the foundation. And we do have, uh, readily available most building centers will, will have this type of foam board insulation. That's uh, two inches thick and probably don't need that much in our in the northwest climate but uh, certainly in the midwest and uh, the east uh, two inches of insulation around your foundation is, is really going to stop uh, heat loss through the ground. A lot of people don't think about the heat loss through the ground they just think the heat rises and goes out but uh, if you saw a a diagram of the heat lost from a greenhouse. The uh, heat goes straight down through the floor and then is the cold, the cold ground outside the greenhouse sucks that heat out from under the greenhouse. So you do have a lot of heat loss through the, through the foundation, through the ground. So if you're pouring a concrete slab, you might even put this under the concrete to keep the heat from going down. That's common practice in homes now. So, Keep in mind insulating your foundation. The uh, materials used, um, let's say you do build a concrete uh, slab or a concrete perimeter wall for your greenhouse. Uh, you're gonna have to cap that with some uh, a wood material or a plastic wood material that you'll fasten the greenhouse to. Now that sill really has two purposes. One is to create an anchoring point for your greenhouse. It also allows you to level the greenhouse on t or, or give yourself a level foundation on top of the concrete. Your concrete may not be perfectly level, 
So when you put this sill material on top of the concrete, that gives you a chance to shim that and get an absolutely level uh, foundation. Now, if you do have to shim it up a little bit, then I recommend using some of that foam that expands, squirt that underneath the uh, sill to uh, fill that void. So that's uh, basically what you need to do on the foundation. Now you're, you're gonna anchor those uh, sill plates with uh, J, uh, J bolts that are regular concrete foundation uh, anchor bolts. So they're about a half inch diameter, nine inches long. And you put those into the fresh concrete. Now you only want them projecting above the concrete the thickness of whatever sill you're going to use. Because if it projects higher, then when you put your greenhouse on there, you're gonna be setting on top of those bolts. So if you're using an inch and a half, two by six, let's say, then you'd want those bolts not to stick up any more than an inch and a half. And you will have to countersink the top of your sill plates to get your nuts on those bolts. This foundation stuff I know is boring, but we'll get to the fun <laughs> stuff later. Uh, do check with your building code again. Uh, be, make sure you, you know what your setback requirements are. Don't want to get have a greenhouse foundation laid and then find out your neighbor comes over and says, hey, that's two feet too close, you got to move it over. So make sure you know what the requirements are for your setback uh, for the greenhouse. The, um, the woods that we normally use are either pressure treated uh, or uh, if they're not pressure treated, you could use cedar or redwood, but I would still put a wood preservative on that and particularly the cut ends of the wood. Uh, the preservatives that we have available today are relatively safe, although maybe not as effective as what we had years, years ago, but uh, pretty much uh, they're okay to use. There are plastic uh, type woods, plastic materials that are good for sills. And again, they're not uh, they don't have the rigid structure of lumber, so they need to be supported. Uh, so if you have a gap or a dip in your concrete, that plastic wood is going to follow that contour, and you're going to have to shim it up as you go. The, uh, the, wood, the plastic and wood composite materials where they've mixed the sawdust with the wood are probably a little better material, uh, a little stronger, stiffer material. You do not want to use any rigid hard plastic, uh, they're, they're just not, uh, well, they're very expensive and uh, you don't want to use any of the hollow uh, uh, plastic lumber as well. The, uh, there's also uh, the, the post and beam type foundation that you could build. Smaller structures like an 8 by 10, 8 by 12, um, maybe 10 by 12 greenhouse. You could use lumber without using concrete. Uh, generally, I recommend you double up the lumber, so maybe two four by fours, one stacked on top of the other, and crossing the corners so that you can anchor those corners together. Now, if you have a good site, you can, uh, and you're not exposed to too much wind, you can just excavate down for that first four by four, three and a half inches, put some crushed rock down, and uh, set that first uh, layer of uh, four by four in place. If you have a site that's sloping, uh, you might want to use the pier blocks that have a screw jack on built into the post hanger. So you can actually set your concrete pier in the ground and then twist this uh, uh, beam holder up until it's level. The, uh, the only problem with those is you've got to fit your lumber into those. And so make sure you've got the right, the right fit. The, uh, that advantage is though that you can screw those in and out until you got a, a level foundation. Commonly uh, anchoring the, found, the wood foundation to the ground is done with rebar steel. It's driving a two or three foot uh, length of rebar into the ground. Sometimes you can use, uh, if you've got soft ground, use those uh, steel uh, farm posts and get a three foot uh, farm post. You probably have to cut it off at the foundation if you can't get it all the way down, but we need to make sure that a lumber or wood foundation is anchored to the ground. One of the biggest problems we have is the greenhouse lifting up, uh, pulling up the foundation. And uh, although, <laughs> remember the picture from uh, Hurricane Sandy, we had a, a, a customer in New Jersey had almost finished their big Cape Cod greenhouse and they sent us a picture, it was almost finished. And the, 
big steel scaffold outside they'd use to get up on the roof and, and uh, get the glass in. And then the next picture, there were a few twisted pieces of metal still attached to the foundation and everything off to the side who it was totally ripped loose uh, from the foundation. So, you know, we're not gonna have Hurricane Sandy here uh, in the Northwest, but uh, you do want to have that greenhouse anchored. Uh, it's, there's a tremendous lifting force when the wind blows over the greenhouse, and if it's not anchored properly, uh, it is gonna lift up and shift. Now, we had a greenhouse out here in our parking lot that uh, one of our display greenhouses that uh, our, we forgot to anchor to the pavement. And we had a, a good wind from the southwest, probably around 55, 60. And that greenhouse got enough lift that it looked like it was on roller skates and it just coasted across the parking lot. <laughs> and that's the lift that's created by the wind. Yeah, very good demonstration. I also saw a picture in uh, an English magazine of a greenhouse sitting in a farmer's field and it had come from the neighbor, but it was sitting intact. The wind had picked it up, carried it over an irrigation ditch, and dropped it on the other side. <laughs> so it's funny things can happen in the wind, so keep the wind in mind. Have you Question. Used, uh, mobile home anchors. Uh, those are a good, good resource. And the uh, type, the question is uh, what type of uh, anchor to use in the mobile home anchors or the augers. Um, you can get those at the pet stores, you know, they, they'll auger into the ground, and then at the pet shows, they'll mm -hmm. attach the animal to the ground anchor. And also, uh, there's uh, tent anchors that auger into the ground as well. But those are really more as a temporary. If you really have winds, uh, concrete in the ground is really going to be your best uh, protection. 